Stanja Belisco here. Uh, I would like to just show you the basic circuit for a balanced modulator. A balanced modulator for creating what we call double sideband suppressed carrier or DSBSC signals. Double sideband suppressed carrier. What we have here is a carrier input port, an audio input port, and the double sideband output port. It looks very much like an amplitude modulator circuit, doesn't it? In fact, it would be exactly that if it were a push-pull class B arrangement. These are NPN bipolar transistors here and notice that the input is connected in a push-pull configuration and so the the input is actually biased in exactly the same way as a class B push-pull amplifier circuit would be. However, the output, you will notice, is different. The collectors are connected in parallel. Not in push-pull, but in parallel. Now, what does that actually do? Well, it tends to cancel out the carrier wave part of the signal but it lets the audio part or the sidebands from the carrier wave that you would get in an AM signal, it lets those through. So what you get at the output is an AM amplitude modulated signal minus the carrier. This is also sometimes called a push-push configuration and in fact can be used as a frequency doubler as well but you would have a tuned circuit here to keep the second harmonic energy <clears throat> from appearing at the output so that's how a balanced modulator circuit works balanced modulator because it tends to balance out the carrier wave in the output part of the circuit and this type of circuit forms the heart of a single sideband transmitter. How do you get single sideband from double sideband, you might ask? Well, that's a topic for another video. The basic method is to use a brute force IF filter, which simply suppresses all of the energy except that at the frequencies of the sideband that you want to have come out of here, either the upper sideband or the lower sideband. So that's how this circuit is configured with a couple of NPN bipolar transistors. You can do the same thing with PNP or with junction field effect transistors. The important consideration though is that you need to have a class B configuration at the input. That is to say you need to bias these transistors so that each one of them conducts in only half of the input cycle. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.